Okay, so um, I've gone ahead and made changes to the firewall. Um, I've allowed through star.prod.zpath.net. I've always wanted to allow that traffic to go through. And so if I run this same command again, um, I get the same um, experience on the connector that I get um, when I run it on my local workstation. So that's good. So system CTL status ZPA connector now. Um, now so it's still going to sit and and, uh, and wait for 10 minutes. So let's give that a bit of a nudge. Um, so if we do system CTL state um, restart ZPA connector uh, and take a look at that status again, um, we can see it's it started to uh, in, enroll. Um, and there we go. And uh, instantly we can see that the um, all of the files here are, are um, um, we've, we've removed the provisioning key. Um, we've downloaded the latest version of the binary. Um, we've encrypted all of the keys, and it's, now we can. We, and the reason why it was failing is not because the TLS connection was failing; was because the certificate exchange between the connector and the and the Zen was failing. So it's important that we uh, understand that we can often get. TCP connectivity, we can uh, DNS resolve, we can route, we can make a TCP connection, but if the certificates don't exchange and um, we can't verify the certificate we're getting back on the connector, then that'll, that'll fail. And that's because we're underpinning, we're, we're checking the PIN certificate we're getting back because we want to have a PIN certificate because we, we're going to exchange over that um, TLS connection our provisioning key. And the provisioning key is a secure, sensitive document that's going to enroll this connector. So we don't want to, to lose that data. OK, so um, let's just take another look at this. Um, it's all up and running. We're running uh, version 19.12.1. So we've upgraded the latest version and everything. Um, but let's make an assumption now we've, um, we've put this connector into the wrong group. Um, how should we go about doing this? Now, the easiest way is probably to just delete the connector um, and uh, and start again. But um, we can always systemctl stop zpa connector. We'll turn it into a connect state, uh, into a stop state, um, and we can. We're in the um, slash op zscaler var direction. We can always rm minus rf uh, all the files in this direction directory. And it's and it's and it's gone. Um, you know, system CTL start ZPA connector um, and uh, running that um, status again. Um, yeah, you know, there's no provisioning key. There's no nothing. Um, it can't find any of the directories or anything like that. We've deleted everything, um, um, and so all of that um, starts to cause a bit of a problem. Um, so let's um, system CTL stop uh, stop. ZPA connector again, um, RM and SRF the files. We can provide the provision underscore key again. Uh, and we've still got, um, we can come back in here and we can say, um, let me have a look at the provisioning keys. Uh, we've now got this London one. Let's copy that key again um, and come back over here and paste it in. Um, now, if you notice, it's the first thing that the problem with VI um, is you've got to explicitly go into insert mode, uh, and you notice this provisioning key looks a bit uh, looks a bit funky. So what we need to do, um, let's start again. We're going to insert first, and then we're going to paste um, the content in. And you see, it has to start with this number one pipe and then A for API, and it was the A that force it to go into insert mode or append mode. So, so we've got the file loaded there now, um, and um, we've got the provisioning key. System CTL start ZPA connector, um, and you can see it's instantly started to encrypt that file. Those these other files are, uh, 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 are getting into the directory as the provisioning goes on. Um, and if we come in here now and, uh, and refresh this page, we look at the provisioning keys, we can see London has now consumed two. We consumed two because we had one created 
uh, one, dis uh, one or two created and one of them has been destroyed. If we look at the connectors, we'll see London 1 and London 2. London 2 is just in its process of upgrading. London 1, we know uh, we destroyed that one. Um, so we really should tidy things up here and delete that. And by deleting London 1, it means that we've only got one in the server group London. And if we refresh this page again, we'll start to see this moving into um, an upgrading state. Um, because it was never going to get to number two until it upgraded number one. So it's just worth understanding the process of deleting provisioning keys. You know, that we should treat these things as uh, just, uh, well, treat them as cattle and, you know, not as pets. Just delete them when you don't need them, move them on to pastures new, um, and, and not worry about them. We can always just reprovision them. It's easy to provision a new connector. It should auto scale if you're in, uh, in an environment that can do that. Okay, so um, our connector is up and running. System CTL status, uh, ZPA connector. We can see it's uh, it's all up and running. Um, downloading newer versions. Uh, it's now going to twenty point three, um, and that'll ha that'll happen um, over time naturally. Um, what else can we do? So you know, if we think about um, the connectors, connectors uh, connect to the cloud. Um, it's important that our policy exists in the cloud to, to give access to applications. Um, you know, invariably a request is going to come out of this, and, and we don't want to be running everything as root. Um, but you know, if a user makes a request to a to an application, let's make sure that the application is available. Um, so first off, you know, can I get to my domain controller? Can I actually DNS resolve wellskeet.net um, and a server there? Absolutely, I can. Um, you know, in terms of troubleshooting a connectivity problem to an application, we should think, can we resolve it? Can we make a TCP connection? Um, can we make an HTTP request? So that's curl uh, dc2.welshgeek.net. We should be able to get a page back. It's my uh, IIS web server, and I can get content. And so if the, web, if the connector can get to the content, then I expect... Um, the, app, the, the client side application to be able to get to the content if my policy is correct. Um, other things that, that, are, that are worth looking at, you know, we, in a previous session we talked about um, uh, applications working through their um, authentication, Kerberos, everything that goes on with Kerberos um, is DNS. You know, DNS underpins um, everything that goes on. We should be able to make sure we can get the DNS resolution. So dc2.welshgeek.net um, tells me that, you know, I got the resolution 192.168.1.2 on the, on the connector side. Um, that should be passing through. The other things that are worth looking at, you know, if we're, we're trying to pass um, uh, um, DNS through, we want to dig a ser server record, underscore Kerberos, Dot underscore tcp dot .welshgeek .net, um, should tell me yes I can resolve the server record and get a host back and that host that comes back um, is then resolved to uh, to an actual IP address so DNS make sure that your DNS resolution is working both internal and external DNS on the connector um, we can enroll connectors and we can look through um, things that are going on on the connector Hopefully that helps. Thank you.